Welcome back guys. So in today's video, we're going to be doing something a little different. Let's build a secret room. And not just any normal type of hidden room, if that's a thing, but everything in here has its secrets. The shelf is not just a shelf. Even the coat rack. It's not just for coats and hats. The mantle, it's a bit more than what meets the eye. But what about the actual furniture, like this side table? Well, I have a sweet tooth. And this coffee table. Let's just say, never judge a book by its cover. I'll make sure to throw links in the description for all of these builds. Enjoy the video. So for those of you that's been with the channel since the very, very beginning, I was actually building this workshop. If you remember back in the back, there was a room that I used for storage. And I said, one of these days, I'm going to turn it into an office. Well, I actually have this room all framed up and ready for a pre-made door to be installed. If you know me, you know the channel. You know, I do not like to do anything that's normal. So let's turn this into a hidden room instead of an office because I really don't sit down. I'm really not for sure what type of a room that it's actually going to be, but we'll figure that out when we get there. Let's get started on trying to make this hidden in plain sight room. Okay, so for this project, I'm actually going to be doing like a wooden offset panel wall. So I've seen these types of rooms done several different ways. A lot of them involve bookshelves, things like that. I wanted to do this one completely different. I want it to look like solid offset wooden panels where magically a door will appear. We'll see if we can make that happen. First, I found some reclaimed material that I want to use for this project and I'm just going to do a little bit of skip planing because I want to keep this rustic look. So the first thing I'm gonna have to do is modify this door. I have it framed up just for a regular size door and that's not gonna work. I'm actually gonna be making this door smaller, maybe the size of a restroom door. And I'm gonna be building and framing this up just a little bit different. I'm actually gonna be building the frame sideways. So instead of like this, like I did the rest, it's gonna be sideways. That way, when the door actually opens, you only have an inch and a half thickness protruding versus a whole three and a half inch board. You'll see what I mean here in a minute. So the basic idea is to have our boards going across like this. And then whenever we open our door, you have to have some place for this end to go. We have to make sure to leave enough room between these two two by fours, this end pivot in. It's the only way that all this will work. Okay, so for what I'm gonna call our door stops, these are made into the frame of the wall. Again, they're sideways. And if you notice here on the left-hand side, I've actually left about an inch gap here. The reason for that is whenever I go to make the door, the door we made like this, and will actually sit on the top of this. So it's gonna make it three and a half inches thick, which is the same thickness as our two by fours here on the side. If I had butted this all the way up against this other two by, it would not open. Whenever the door would go to pivot out, it would actually catch on the corner of this stud. So by moving it in, whenever this goes to pivot out, you have plenty of clearance, at least in theory. So with our door supports in place, this will actually be a pivot point for our door. Let's go ahead and make the door. Since I'm going to be putting this door frame together flat, let's go ahead and put some pocket holes in the ends of these cross boards. So before I set this door in, I'm going to use some washers as spacers because I actually left about a half of an inch gap in the top and the bottom. That way, in case this wood's a bit warped, we won't have to worry about any type of dragging. If you enjoy this type of content, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. This is what I was talking about, about having it flat. Now having it flat is going to allow us to hinge out without it interfering with this side. Now what I will have to do, this is not quite the thickness of this wall, as you can see. So I'm going to shim this out a bit, match the thickness of our hinges that lines up. I had to bring those out just a hair, but we're getting there. And on this door, I think I'm going to add another vertical board. I have a feeling that as I start to lay my horizontal boards across, some of those are going to have to meet in the center. So I need something for it to actually meet to. Let's add another one of those. And a common theme in this wood, bowed. 
For a reinforcement board in the center of this, I decided to go ahead and just make it a couple of inches wide. So I put a couple pocket holes in each end and I'm doing this to try to keep down the weight that's on the door. Because in the end, there's gonna be a lot of weight just on these hinges. So let me get this put in. Oh, I gotta suck it in. I need to go on a diet. It's really not gonna be any good because that board's crooked. It's work smarter, not harder. Okay, so we still have this inset to deal with. This does not sit flush with the outside and I really need it to. Part of it's because of the hinges on this side. So let's build this out. Do that just by using a couple of nuts and washers. I'm sure that they make like dedicated spacers or some fancy expensive something or another for this, but that'll do the trick. Call it redneckery. Okay, so with our wall built and our hidden door that's not so hidden right now, with all of that into place, it is time to actually start to hide this baby. So we're going to do that by putting the cross slats in, but now I just had to figure out exactly how I'm going to do it in order for this door to open and everything to hinge the way that it's supposed to. So in order to do that, these center boards have to be perfect length in order to hinge in. Now you starting to pick up what I'm throwing down. This is what I'm picturing. So I went ahead and I've cut little grooves and laps onto some of my material. It's the only way that this is gonna work is if I have some boards like this and some boards that are kind of cut like this. They will overlap each other, so kind of like a half lap. That way, whenever we go to open the door, it won't get hung because if they were both just flush and just butt jointed, there wouldn't be any room for this to open. That's why you always see like bookshelves and things like that. There's always trim that hides that opening. And that is because you have to allow for the swing of the door. So this is three quarters of an inch thick. You will have to make up for that three quarters of an inch in some way or another in order for it to open. So this is the way that I've figured out to do it. Just kind of a basic overlay half lap. We'll see how it turns out. Kind of an example mock-up. These are all the different sizes that I'm going to have to have for this build. I've ended up with eight different sizes and each one of these ends will have either an outer facing gap or an inner facing. That way, as everything works, it folds right back onto itself, leaving just a tiny little gap that's not noticeable and actually looks like that it's designed like that. All these parts have to be the same size and they have to have these notches on the ends. I think I'm gonna use a dado stack for that. You can achieve this with a miter saw. That's how I achieve this kind of mock-up version. All this material is gonna have to be ripped down to the same width. That way all of our boards match up and leaves minimal gaps in the material. All these parts have to be cut to eight different sizes and the notches put in each end. So let's get the cutting. Okay, so I'm gonna start making my cuts. I'm gonna cut everything to size first and then I'm gonna rip it down. Since I have all of these different measurements, there's actually eight different size cuts and you know, they're all like 35 inches, 41 and a half, 18, 23 and a half. So since they're kind of random sizes, I'm gonna go ahead and mark this board I just laid out a sacrificial board across the top of the saw. I'm gonna mark it out with all of these different sizes. That way, whenever I get to processing my pile of wood, I'll be able to tell if the offcuts are long enough to use for different parts of the project. All about saving that wood. Okay, so we have everything set up to begin processing our material. We're gonna cut everything down to lengths. I'll probably set up a dado stack to put the notches on, and we'll also be ripping everything down to five and a half inches. If you're wondering why I'm using this job site miter saw, one of my kids works in construction, and I've always been leery about high power tools like miter saws, table saws, things like that, that are battery operated. In case you're wondering, no, they did not sponsor this video. We're gonna put this thing to the test. And for this build, I'm gonna be using reclaimed heart pine. So virgin growth heart pine is extremely dense and weighs almost four pounds per square foot. And the reason why is because of the growth rings how tight everything is and the resin content of this material. Let me show you an example of why this three quarters of an inch board weighs more than this inch and a half two by four. So look at the growth rings of this two by four. See how far apart they are? This thing grew extremely fast. Now look at the growth rings of the heart pine. So this three quarters of an inch board has over 10 growth rings, whereas this inch and a half two by four only has five. Everything in between your growth rings is sapped with. That's what makes it soft. That's what makes it light. That's what makes it bow and twist. That should explain a lot.
So I just made the final cut with this saw, which is over 200 cuts with one battery. And there's juice left in it. It's actually very surprising to me because I know how like angle grinders, things like that can really zap a battery. Now that I have all the material cut to length, since a lot of this reclaimed wood has different widths, we need to get it all down to the same width. Over to the table saw. And for those of you that love your M2RZ mask as much as I do, there are big, awesome changes coming. Can't say a whole lot more, but I'm gonna throw a link in the description with a discount code so you can keep an eye out for this new product. All right, so now it's time to put the notches on each end of these things. As you can see, one notch may be facing one way, while the other is on the back. So, I have to be very careful with all of these because I'm running out of material. And to do that, I'm going to be using a half inch dado stack that I put on my old Delta table saw. Okay, so on my fence, I've placed a sacrificial board, and then I also have my miter gauge to feed this through. It goes just like that. Okay, so now that we have all of our parts cut, it's finally time to start putting this wall together. We're gonna to be starting at the bottom and working our way up. We're also gonna be starting at this door where the pinch point will be. Time to get started. All right, so I ran into a little problem. I should have thought of this ahead of time, but I didn't. Because whenever I reach the top of this door, it cannot have any overhang that actually hits this header because this is gonna be in swing like the rest of this. So if there's any type of board that's taller than this header, it's gonna hit here. So this whole row is gonna to have to be ripped down. Uh, looks like maybe a quarter of an inch. I'm gonna go ahead and do that, then get back to work. So we just got our last piece put in. Now we just need to put some trim up in the corners. Maybe put some roofing on the top here to match and just plug up a few holes and we're done. But it's looking good. So what's a hidden room without some super cool biometric fingerprint reading device? Is it needed? Eh, probably not, but it's super cool. The problem with the fingerprint readers is they're not hidden. You know, they're not like an RFID lock or something like that where you can just swipe a card. So I figured out a way to actually hide the little round button that reads my fingerprint. I'm gonna try to follow this natural crack with an oscillating saw, shave this down a bit, and actually install it from the back, making this a little access door. We'll see. All right, so my little hidden access door turned out pretty awesome, I think. I just threw a little hinge on there. And then to install the fingerprint reader, that's all that I had to do was to cut a hole the same diameter as the reader into a piece of scrap wood, run that through, and then fasten it in from the back. So from the back, it looks like this. All of this is gonna have its own paneling on the inside, so you're not gonna be able to see any of this, but that is how it is connected. And I've just ran a wire down to my locking mechanism. So if you decide to install a fingerprint reader on a build similar to this, make sure that you do not do what I did. So after installing the reader, and the locking mechanism, it was time to install the latch. So the latch is actually installed inside of the door. And while I was getting that lined up just perfect so that this door would stay nice and tight, it latched. 
perfectly while I was on the inside. Okay, so the fingerprint reader's out here. I didn't have any tools with me on the inside. I locked myself in my own hidden room. Don't do that. So I called up my buddy at Lock Connection, explained to him the problem that I have. So I have a room that I actually need to access in as well as access out. How can we make this work? So he came up with the solution for the problem by installing a reader on the inside and the outside that are linked to two locks. I do not have the locks installed right now because I'm still waiting for them to come in. But he sent me a video of how they work and each fingerprint reader, the one on the inside and the outside, will actually activate both of these locks. So I'll throw a link to that bundle in the description if you are interested in building something like this. So in all reality, this wall was not hard to build and I think that it turned out great. Now it was time for me to enjoy the fruits of my labor. So you just saw how easy something like this can be accomplished. So until next time guys, we'll see ya.